Hello, everybody. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Wow, I just rejoined just in time because, of course, I was having technical difficulties and I came back in at the perfect time. <laughs> Literally five seconds to go and she was on the call. So I was excellent sweating. timing. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. We have a very exciting topic and maybe you've actually been through this before. Maybe you're learning about it now. So just in case it happens in the future, you know what to do. But we're going to be talking about how to save a failing client relationship. So as usual, let us know where you're joining from in the chat. I love to see where everyone is based. And while you do that, I can jump right into it. Now, if this is your very first webinar with us, welcome. We're excited to have you. So we're Hey Orca, and we're a social media scheduler for teams and agencies. So we are here to help you with all your scheduling needs. And we also have unlimited users, which very exciting. We love that perk. So if you don't know us, now you know who we are. And we'll do a quick round of intros. So my name is Alyssa and I'm a community manager here at Heyorka. So I work on our webinars, our newsletter, Facebook group, all that kind of stuff. And I'll pass it over to Jesse. Awesome, yeah, I'm Jesse. I put in the chat that I'm joining from Montreal and I love seeing all of the places you're joining from. I'm director of marketing here at Hey Orca. So really that means I want all the social media managers in the world to use us. So please spread the word. <laughs> all right, and as usual, we love to do giveaways. Also, side note, if you hear a little bit of hammering in the background, I thought they were going to be done before now, but they are not. But just just try to tune it out. Hopefully it's not that loud. <laughs> um, but yes, we have two giveaways today, both to win an Amazon gift card. So the first way to win is very easy. All you have to do is head to our LinkedIn page and we have a poll going on right now. So all you have to do is head over there. Lyle just put the link to it in the chat. Head over, vote on the poll, and you have until tomorrow at noon to vote. And then I will be randomly selecting someone to win an Amazon gift card. And then the second way to win, you actually have a little bit more time for this one. So share what you learned from this webinar on LinkedIn. Tag Hey Orca, and you could win another Amazon gift card. So this one you actually have until Tuesday at noon. Um, so you have a while to get that post up. And here's a little hack for you. Take a screenshot of whatever slide you come across in this presentation that maybe really resonates with you or something you want to remember. Screenshot it and add it to your LinkedIn post because that's a really easy way to just get a post up there. You can you know, summarize it a little bit. So little hack for you. So two ways to win. One is the poll and then one is to let us know what you learned. And I do wanna shout out um, Sylvia. She was our winner from last week. Um, last week we were talking about TikTok engagement and moderation. So she took a screenshot of a slide and then talked a little bit about what she learned. So congratulations, Sylvia. And I'll pass it over to Jesse. Amazing. So one quick little update here from the Heyorka team is that our mobile app just got probably my favorite update ever. Um, you can now edit and approve content in the Heyorka app. So you can see here in the slide, I have a bit of a screenshot since I thought it would be a little bit awkward to just show my phone <laughs> while doing this presentation. Um, so you can see right at the top that you can approve posts. There's a little approve button, a little um, revisit, a revise uh, button. And if you go down a little further, you can look at post stage. Um, and you can go between like draft, approved, et cetera. And then caption, you can also edit your caption. So that's very exciting. Um, if you're a Heyorka user, don't sleep on our app, <laughs> on our mobile app specifically. Go take a look. It is so useful to have when you're away from your desk but need to make edits. 
I love this. And this is something that we have been asked for from our customers for so long. So I'm very excited that we can now give it to them. So let us know in the chat. Maybe you've seen this already. Maybe you've used it. Let us know. All right, so we'll dive into it today. We have a lot of good stuff to cover. So we're going to be going over the signs. The re client relationship is struggling. So there's many different warning signs. So we're going to go over those. Um, and then the biggest question, are all clients worth saving? So some you might want to save, some you might not. We'll go over all of that. And then we're going to talk about how you can actually approach these situations. So we have a few common situations, and then we also have some real life examples from our community. And then last, we're going to talk about, um, is it possible to avoid relationship deterioration? So we'll dive right in. All right, so we're gonna talk about signs the client, client relationship is struggling. Um, and let me know in the chat, if you have ever experienced this, we'd love to hear your firsthand experience. Um, you don't need to give all the details because I know um, some of it might be private, but I'd love to know if you've ever seen these warning signs, if you've seen other ones, all of that. So let us know in the chat. So we did ask our community um, for some of their real life stories and what they have gone through. So we actually have a few warning signs from them. So the first one is one of the biggest warning signs to be wary of can be a lack of communication. If you're getting radio silence for an unusual amount of time, that can often be a sign that the client is feeling disconnected and unhappy, and it could be a time bomb, ticking time bomb. So that one's a big one and probably a very common one as well is they just kind of go quiet. They're, they're not speaking as much. Maybe they're not responding to your emails. Uh, maybe when you are chatting with them, there's just not much conversation there. So that one I would say is a very common one. Um, another member of the community said, the biggest warning signs include telling you that the social content and copy weren't what they wanted, blank and straight faces over Zoom, or no cameras on at all, and sending a lot of emails that kind of feel like they're micromanaging you. So this one is interesting because I never thought of the Zoom one. So if you're always doing video calls with them and they're just no cameras on, straight faces, no smiling, maybe they look really bored, um, that is definitely a red flag. So that one I did not think of, but that is totally true. Another member of the community said, one warning sign I've seen is that clients will suddenly um, suddenly be hypercritical of the team's work, even though they've loved it in the past, or they request to pull back on their advertising budget or cancel a service. So we're, we'll actually go into this kind of situation in a little bit, but yeah, if they're kind of pulling back on services that they used to love or they're reevaluating their budget, that could definitely be a warning sign. Um, and then the last one is you should keep an eye on clients who have had changes in their key personnel. This can sometimes lead to decision makers reevaluating existing partnerships. So this is a very good one as well. So maybe if there's a restructuring or maybe if a bunch of people quit and a bunch of new people come in, that can also be a warning sign as well. I will say that happened to my dad who used to run a freelance graphic design agency. Um, he he was working for a company or he, sorry, he had a company as a client who brought in someone new and that person already had an agency that they wanted to work with. So unfortunately my dad was cut just because this new person wanted their, the agency they had a relationship with. So even small things out of your control sometimes will influence uh, your relationship with your agency and your client. That's so true. And I didn't know he had a graphic design yeah. agency. Very cool. Love that. We need to get him as a guest on a yep. webinar. <laughs> um, so yeah, here are some more warning signs. They kind of correlate with the ones from the community, but this could be another good screenshotable slide if you are looking for one. Um, but the eight warning signs can be reduced communication and involvement, 
unrealistic expectations and demands, increased complaints, slow payment, budget cuts, comparison to competitors, a sudden shift in priorities, and changes in key personnel. So all things to keep an eye out for. All right, I'll pass it to Jesse. Awesome. So we just went over the warning signs that you might be experiencing as an agency with your client. But now our next question is, are all clients worth saving? So I'd actually love if you can all put in the chat your opinion on this. Are all clients worth saving when you start noticing these warning signs? I know a another option here probably should be maybe, <laughs> but if you were to choose yes or no, what would you choose? I'm seeing a lot of no's so far. Cool. I, uh, yeah, you guys are right. <laughs> it is no, not every client is worth saving. So if you've ever been in that situation and you're really not sure how to decide whether a client is worth saving or not, we have some questions here that you could probably ask yourself to make that decision. And there's countless more you can also ask yourself. This is just a very good starting point. Um, so have they contacted you after hours multiple times? So I personally think it's fine if they send an email, but if they require you to answer that email, that might be a, a red flag right there. Have they frequently demanded very tight deadlines? Have they been unprofessional when speaking with you? Um, have they sent emails that you dread opening? Have, you frequent, have they been frequently late on their payments? Have they been constantly giving you negative feedback? Um, has the scope been creeping um, consistently over time? Have they been unresponsive? Uh, so yeah, again, these are just a few of the questions that you can ask yourself and agree with a lot of the members of the chat saying not necessarily, sometimes I'm not a great fit, completely agree. Actually, a lot of folks are saying that. So it seems like we're all very much on the same page here. Um, so yeah, just another thing to keep in mind, your mental health is a key factor as Oscar here says, and as Alyssa and I here say as well. So it could feel really hard to give up a client because you know that is income to your agency, but ultimately being selective can help um, get better results, professional growth, and just more satisfaction in your day-to-day. -day. And if you also have team members, their day-to-day -day as well. We do have a comment in the chat. What if every answer to that <laughs> slide is yes? <laughs> oh, I feel very bad, <laughs> Carly. <laughs> Um, I think that you might enjoy the rest of this presentation then. <laughs> um, all right. So when you get to this point, you do have to make a decision. So there's, I would say there's two main things, but there's a lot of gray area in here as well. So you can decide to part ways with, um, with your client. That is a topic for another webinar. Um, or you can de decide to solve the problem and try to rebuild your client agency relationship, which is what we're actually going to get into right now. All right, so now it's time for the real life situation. So we're going to go through a few different situations and then how you can approach it. So maybe you're going through one of these right now, and hopefully this can help guide you a little bit. So the first issue, your agency has made a big mistake. So let's dive into how you can fix this. So first, uh, find out everything you can about the issue. So speak with that account manager, the team that works on um, their account, everyone who's involved with them, definitely chat with all of them and get every last detail that you can about what happened. And then once you have all that information, it's best to just be completely transparent um, with your clients. So as hard as the conversation may be, to have with them, it's best to just be completely honest. Let them know what happened um, because you know honesty is always the best policy. They don't want to be lied to and maybe like play it down a little bit. Just be completely open about with uh, what happened, um, and then from there you can walk them through what your action plan is going to be. So you can talk about how your agency is going to resolve the mistake how um, the how is further damage being contained and then what will you do to prevent this from happening again in the future um, and then after that conversation then you just have to start to regain their trust back so um, I would say maybe even treat them like they're a new client maybe give them you know like very 
very good um, service, like kind of, I mean, you're going to give them good service the whole time, but I feel like when you first bring someone on, you kind of treat them, you know, like they're the king and queen of, of the world. So you definitely want to kind of go back to that and just regain their trust again. I'd love to ask the chat if uh, they have an example of a mistake that either they've done or they've heard maybe a colleague done. I can get us started. I had a marketing prof once who said that he accidentally added a zero to um, some ad budget. So it was supposed to be a $10,000 ad budget, ended up being a $100,000 ad budget. But because he noticed pretty much right away and was very transparent with the client, um, the client actually was really impressed with his honesty and like it was totally fine. They, they fixed it and it was it was all good, but it could have went another way if you had tried to hide it. Oh my gosh. Yes, that that is crazy. Yeah, you definitely just want to just go out there and as quick as possible, just tell them what's going on. Um, and the longer you wait also to like try to like make a plan, the worse it will be. So just, Rip just go for it right away. <laughs> exactly. Yes, let us know in the chat um, if you've ever had a mistake happen with a client. Now, the next one, your client uh, has unrealistic expectations, another very common one, I think. So um, how do you go about this? So first, get the client's perspective on why they have these expectations. So maybe in your beginning call you had with them, maybe something was mentioned and they like misunderstood it in some way. Um, so just chat with them and just get uh, their perspective on what they're actually expecting. Um, and then after that, you can set and agree upon realistic expectations. So you can base it on their budget, scope of work, data, past experience, and just kind of lay it all out there and show them um, what you're going to be working on and what is included in the project. Um, and you can kind of talk it out with if they want to add more things in, um, you can kind of go through that and see what fits in their budget. Then from there, you can set up a plan to reach these new expectations. So maybe you've added a few things in. So how is your team going to get that done? And then schedule regular check-ins highlighting pr uh, progress and if you're reaching your goals and what the next steps are. So. I think, um, yeah, just being, again, kind of similar to the one before, just be very honest and open about it. Um, maybe it all came down to a misunderstanding on their end, but as long as you're putting it all out there and going through it all, um, then it should be okay. So um, I do see we have some stories in the chat though. So let me take a look. Um, one of so Kristen says one of my coworkers accidentally used the wrong phone number for a client on an image. Fortunately, we fixed it and decided no more phone numbers on graphics unless it's specifically requested. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one because it's very easy to mess up a phone number. So I agree, just not having them on there. <laughs> what else do we have here? Um, Christina says, Grant Writer here, the one we're always scared of happening is missing um, submitting a grant. This has happened and we followed the damage, uh, we followed the damage management protocol. Yes, that is a big one. You definitely don't want to miss a grant anywhere. Um, and let me see, Jen, I just had a website development client with unrealistic expectations. It's been an adventure. I can definitely see that. Let me see what else is here. Uh, a good one. Oh, sorry, you, you go ahead. <laughs> that was the exact one I was going to read. But I find that mistakes happen, especially when you're scheduling and creating lots of posts. In my case, like 300 to 400 a month across multiple clients. I always find they remember the one you mis one mistake you made as opposed to the 300 plus perfect posts. Totally understand that, Michael. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> no words. I get it. <laughs> Um, luckily, the clients we have also respect the honesty and also uh, quick fixes should anything arise. I also find that good work leads to goodwill and allows for a bit of wiggle room. Completely agree with that. I will also agree with someone, I think it was Kristen, yeah, um, that we're all human. So all we can do is do our best. And if we need to fix it and have a strategy to move forward. 
Perfect. Thank you everyone for sharing all of your stories. Um, and I can pass it over to Jesse, who will go through some other ones. Amazing. So one of the issues that I'm going to talk about is that your client doesn't think that your rates match your scope of work. Um, so I'd actually love if you guys in the comments can write what would you do in this situation, even if it's just a really short summary of obviously what would be a much longer conversation. Uh, but again, what would you do if your client doesn't think your rates match your scope of work? You can add it in the chat and in around 30 seconds, I will move to the next slide. We need, we need to have like the little Jeopardy music. I know, I was thinking that <laughs> if only the hammering in your background was to the like the rhythm of it. <laughs> if only they could just be doing like a song or something. They need to find more, you know, more rhythm, more beats. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we're getting some answers. So Rachel, this is why time entry at an agency matters. Completely agree and I'll show you why in the next slide. Jen, wish them well and ask them to think of me next time. That is an option for sure. Um, in this case, we want to try to keep the client. <laughs> so let me know what you would add here. Uh, uh, who's next? Kenzie, break down hours for each deliverable. Great suggestion. Shiva, I would give them a three-day trial free. Great, thank you. Um, Christina, scope of work, explain and break down the scope of work. There's communication, writing, uh, research, stewardship, and so much more. Michael, we don't tend to have that problem much with existing clients. This tends to be more of a problem with new clients. All right, we're saying very similar things. I think it's best if I go to the answer slide. So again, the issue is, what would you do if your client doesn't have, or doesn't think your rates match your scope of work? And we're assuming here that this client has been with you for a little bit of time. Um, so number one, I think like every problem, you're just trying to figure out why they think this. Um, interview them, ask them some questions, try to get as specific as possible. Um, then once you have a bit of an idea of why this, why your client might be feeling this way, we'll revisit the scope of work together. So you can break down the costs, you can explain the extent of work involved. And number two is something that I saw quite a lot here in the comments section. Um, basically just make it clear what you're doing as an agency. Not everyone understands what it takes to be able to put together, I don't know, five reels a week or whatever um, package you're giving them. Then it's best to highlight your team's value to the client. So why did you initially have this client or like what sold this client to you initially? It would be a great um, idea to remind them of this fact. And if there's more to add, great. For example, let's say you've done something really successful with them in the past. It's a great opportunity to bring it up and be like, hey, remember this really great time um, that we had a really successful campaign? This, yeah. And yeah, just remind them of that. Um, that being said, you won't always... Uh, have a client who wants to stay on that rate. So another good option, um, if it gets to this point, is to provide alternative tiers to the client for more flexibility. So let's say right now you have three tiers at your agency with different packages for each. Let's say they're on the highest tier. Um, you could suggest maybe moving to the middle tier to see how that would look and see what they think of that instead. Uh, once you've settled up on your on a new or recurring, I guess, scope of work, you could then set up recurring check-ins. And it's good to continue to monitor how the client is feeling as you work through this new, uh, this new work. I'm just going to head back into the comments quickly to see what others have said. Um, if one stood out to you, Alyssa, let me know. I think I'm a bit behind now. Uh, let me see here. I think Josh has a good one. Review contract and renegotiate as needed. Mm -hmm. Definitely a good option for sure. I would um, echo Carly, who says, fully explain what goes into the work. Social media seems easy from the outside. I just watched a TikTok <laughs> where someone um, heard one of those like, oh, I can get rich doing social media with like two hours a week of work. And then she actually tried it and obviously <laughs> didn't work out. So um, social media just seems very easy from the outside. We all make it look so easy. Uh, cool. All right. I'm going to move to the next one, but same deal. Please add your ideas into the chat. So with this issue, your client feels like they are out of the loop. How would you approach the situation? And so if someone feels out of the loop, they might be um, giving fresh, sending frustrations. They might, you might see them pop up on Slack more often than you have before. Um, anyways, there's loads of things that they might be feeling out of the loop for. How would you address it? 
cue the fake Jeopardy music again. Right when the hammering stops. It's like <laughs> we could have had some background noise here. Just I'm playing it in my head, the Jeopardy song. Nice. I will say the show I'm watching now is um, Dancing with the Stars because they have so many great, uh, like not pros, uh, well, pros as well, but celebrities on this season. Love it. I have been seeing lots of clips of it on TikTok. <laughs> Same. All right, we're getting some answers here in the chat. So again, the question is, your client feels out of the loop, what do you do? Emily writes, set up a standing meeting to communicate more, great suggestion. Um, Jen, give frequent updates, ask questions, meet on a set schedule. Christina, I believe, is giving some Jeopardy music, so appreciate that. <laughs> I will give it another 10 seconds and then I can move on to the next slide with the answer. Madeline, work out with the client how to best communicate with them. Maybe they need email updates rather than meetings or maybe they need a phone call. Love the flexibility you're suggesting here. All right, let's hop into the answers. So again, as always, investigate exactly why the client is feeling frustrated or feeling out of the loop. Um, you might have an idea, but it's always good to double check if your idea matches their idea. And then together, uh, let's figure out what is missing from your communication process. So is it that they don't like the channel that you're sending updates on or maybe um, maybe something's technologically wrong with the channel. Um, maybe they prefer recurring calls, but right now you're only um, doing emails. So just find out what channels are best for your relationship. And then it goes into frequency. What frequency is best for you as an agency, but also you as a client? Um, that might be every two weeks having a check-in every week, maybe even every day for some of those high pressure clients, you never know. Response times, if your client sends you a reply, what is your guaranteed response time? Is it under a day that you'll get back to them? Is it under two days? Um, assuming business days in most cases. So just be very clear what uh, type of communication response you would uh, you should expect or your client should expect from you, sorry. Who are the key stakeholders? It could be that your client feels frustrated because they're not considered a key stakeholder for whatever reason. Let's make sure they're in the loop or make sure their boss is in the loop or whoever is missing from this equation. And then one thing that we've added in here is definition of an emergency, <laughs> because sometimes clients might think what maybe a typo on a post is an emergency, while others might say, oh, my social media has been hacked and that's an emergency. So just figure out what an emergency is and how they can contact you. Um, so obviously it's great to make this process, but if you don't follow through with it, like, you know, nothing's going to happen. So step three here is just follow through with the new communication process. And then as always continue to ask for feedback on new processes, um, maybe in a few weeks or whatever timeline you've, uh, you've decided on together to make sure you're still both aligned. I love the, the one about definition of, of emergency, because I feel like in a lot of cases, everything's an emergency but it's not actually but things like you know yeah getting hacked that's definitely an emergency so that is smart to go over <laughs> definitely and okay i see a few examples here in the chat so michael we always have monthly editorial meetings with our existing clients for content planning and reinforce that it's also an opportunity to address any pain points love that we have a whatsapp communication as well so they can always communicate in real time during any issues that's really great thank you for sharing my that michael um, Josh does weekly check-ins with uh, agenda follow-ups always after, calls if needed. Love that. Uh, and I think we've already looked at the other comments. Perfect. And Alyssa, I will uh, pass it back yeah. to you. Sounds good. So um, we did speak with our community um, about all of this um, and about some you know, real life experiences that we've had. So let's go through a few. So you may remember earlier, uh, someone from our community was saying the biggest warning sign can be lack of communication. So if they're going radio silent or um, they're just not as engaged um, as they usually were, this is how they dealt with it. So they said, I found that healthy communication keeps the client comfortable. A good amount of touch points, back and forth, et cetera, can help establish trust, transparency, like you're on their side and can be treated like a partner rather than a vendor. So totally true. I think communication is definitely one of the biggest things um, that is uh, needed for a client relationship. 
Um, you just want to be open, honest, and it's true that you want to treat them like a partner rather than a vendor. So love that. And then next one here. So this was the one earlier that mentioned um, saying uh, that they didn't like the social content or copy blank and straight faces over Zoom or no cameras and sending a lot of emails kind of feeling like they're micromanaging you. So this is how they approached it. So they said, we quickly realized we were in jeopardy. Speaking of jeopardy, we quickly realized we were in jeopardy of losing a client and fast. It started with our senior leadership group breaking down the situation to the managers and then the manager of the team that worked with the client. Through this process, we had to schedule more internal meetings than ever before but we came up with a really good process to check creative copy strategy and the entire scope of work. It added more time and stress, but after all of that, we wound up keeping the client as well as the client signing on for another two more years, probably one of the biggest client saves of all time. So that's so true. Um, I like that they mentioned that there was a ton of internal meetings because I can just see that where you really want to get the whole team aligned on what's going on, how you're going to fix it and move forward from it. So um, it's great to see that. And then I'm really glad it paid off for them because they not only kept the client, but they actually re-signed for two more years. So that is awesome. And then I'll pass it to Jesse. Awesome. So another um, from our community that we received, one warning sign I've seen is that clients will suddenly be hypercritical, um, even if they love the work in the past or they request to pull back on their advertising budget or cancel a service. Um, so here's how that community member uh, was able to solve this problem. It can sometimes be that they want their account to go in a different direction than what they previously wanted. Clients can change their mind and that's okay. Or if it's to do with cost, we work with them and their budget. We choose to pause ads or decide to go with ads only plans and check in with them uh, every so often to see if the budget has changed. The most important thing is that we make sure the client feels heard and understood. Um, I echo, uh, I think one of our previous uh, uh, slides, actually, I'm going to go back, also said, yeah, treat um, like a partner rather than a vendor. So I feel like that's a, a theme in this one here as well. <laughs> um, we once had a client almost leave because they didn't feel heard by one of our sales reps. So my boss ended up getting on the call to help talk it out. I will say a lot of these are very stressful situations. So it's pretty easy to read it after and be like, oh yeah, that's, it's easy to do. But when you're living in it, it <laughs> it's definitely tough. So I um, applaud everyone who's able to get through this and like build out their plan and work with their clients because it's not an easy job. Yeah, I can only imagine how stressful it is in the time of this happening live where you're just like, how are we going to go about this? Like, how are we going to speak to them? What are we going to say? Um, as someone, I always overthink things and I can just see myself not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Usually my um, neck turns very red <laughs> in conversations <laughs> like that. <laughs> Uh, all right, and this is the last one that we got from our community. So their, their situation was, we did have one client that was not happy with the results they were getting. You know, very standard problem that an agency could be facing. And what this community member decided to do was they offered to develop a new strategy that they would personally implement. Um, if after three months they were still not happy, then they would let them go. But luckily the strategy worked and they were able to see results and still have a very happy client. So good news all around. Uh, all right, so we're almost near the end of our presentation, just a few more slides. And one thing that we wanted to cover um, just to kind of conclude this conversation is, is it possible to avoid relationship deterioration? Um, I think everyone would say yes. So I would love if you all in the chat could give examples of things that would help avoid any situation um, where you as an agency and your clients aren't happy. So yeah, I'll give you 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, we really need to get sound effects and a big marker. We'll we'll figure that out, everyone, and then we'll we'll come back with it. Yeah. So just in case you missed the question, I'll repeat it one more time. What could you do to avoid some of these relationship problems with your agency and clients in future? And this is something that you might already have implemented. This might be a new idea. 
All right, Jen says, listening to your client's problems, letting them speak, offer a mutually agreeable solution. Love that. I'll give 10 more seconds and then I'll uh, swap slides and show you the answers. Okay, I think I'm counting fast, but I'm gonna, gonna <laughs> move slides. Um, all right, so there are a few things. We've listed three here, but there are actually way more that you can consider, but I would say these are the three big things that help build healthy client agency relationships. So one is clear contracts and agreements. If you're able to have something very clear and in writing of what you're expected to bring to the table, um, I think that will alleviate a lot of the questions or concerns you might receive. So in your contracts, you should have scope of work, payment terms, revision policies, and termination clauses. Um, to me, the scope of work, the first, they're all important, but scope of work and revision policies particularly stand out because those are um, quite normal pain points that you see in an agency. Another thing that will build a really healthy client agency relationship is an effective onboarding process. Um, so you're going to use this to get a good understanding of your client's business, what their goals are, what their target audience are, uh, is what their preferences are. Um, and this is where you can start to also help with expectations, <laughs> which is another common point that you'll see at your agency. In your onboarding, you'll set up some communication processes uh, going over all the things we've already said. So like channels, who's involved, frequency, et cetera. Uh, you'll also start building up your client plan there. And then finally, one thing that will, uh, the last thing that we've listed here that will help build a healthy client agency relationship is regular communication. So just being consistent with your reporting, being transparent with performance and decisions. And I would say transparency also helps with any potential mistakes that come up. Um, recurring check-ins, uh, have your expectations updated uh, in those recurring check-ins and just continually building the relationships so they don't feel like um, you're no longer the new fun client, you're just like one of the regulars. <laughs> so I would say those are what I would add, but let me check in the chat if anyone had more to add. Yes, we have uh, Maria here says, uh, be transparent with them. We often underestimate our client's ability to be understanding, but most of them are happy if you are 100% clear and transparent. And then Robin says, anything is possible if you have the desire to save it. Very true. Um, Carly says, I try to build strong bonds. I support my clients by attending events they host um besides doing the work that's a nice one i like that because then it just shows that you truly care about the relationship that you have with them so love that and then christina says working remotely it's often um that we do zoom emails and phone calls i've noticed that doing in-person meetings occasionally help um, exponentially it's easy for people to react and respond without thinking of the other person on the other end as a person. That's so true, yeah. That is a good thing to remember. Definitely. All right, that wraps up our presentation for today. We have a few more updates to let you know about before we sign off. Um, Alyssa, do you want me to go first with our hiring update? Yes, that one's very exciting, so <laughs> definitely let them know. <laughs> Awesome. So Lyle, um, we'll be putting a link in the chat, but we are hiring a social media manager, uh, a Canada-based social media manager, because we've had a lot of questions about um, location. Uh, we're looking for someone who is particularly good at video content, who would be interested in attending these webinars as a co-host um, with Alyssa here. So yeah, take a look at the job posting and send an application. Yay. Yes, you could be my co-host. So definitely apply there. Um, and we can't wait to see all of the applications. Um, the other thing I'll mention is next week, we have a very exciting webinar. We have Joe, our CEO, and also Christina Garnett on with us. And they're gonna be talking about how to create community-led content. So this is gonna be a really, really good one. I've already heard some of the things that they might be saying, and it's, it's gonna be very good. So. I will post the link to that in the chat. So definitely register for that. Um, so that is next week. Um, and if you ever wanna keep up with our webinars, like what's coming up or any recordings, if you just head to our website, um, heyorka.com slash webinars, everything will be there. So if you ever miss one, you can always find it on that page. 
Awesome. And my final update, at least, is to go to the poll. Um, because as a reminder, if you answer the poll, which literally just takes one click, uh, you are eligible for a Amazon gift card. Uh, only 18 people last time I saw have participated. So you have a good chance of winning that card. And if you want another chance, you can also create a post about us um, after the yeah. fact. Yes, I cannot wait to pick the winner. So yes, the poll one will be tomorrow at noon. And then if you want to post about what you learned, you have until Tuesday at noon for that one. Yes. Awesome. Well, that is everything we have today. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing so much in the chat. I loved reading all of your stories and um, Amazon US or UK. So it'll be whatever, wherever you're located, um, that's what it will be in. Good question. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for sharing so much. It was great reading all of your stories and maybe we'll see you next week. I hope so. <laughs> Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.